Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM joining you from actually a wet and windy San Diego. And actually today I'm joined by a fellow San Diegan, Lenya McGrath. How are you doing? Or McGrath, depending on how you want to pronounce it. As Lenya said, it's pronounced differently in our home country as it is here. <laughs> That's right. It's good to see you, John. I'm excited to be on. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, and Lenny is a seasoned marketing leader with nearly two decades of experience and have built brands for industry giants like Procter & Gamble, Wilson Sporting Goods, Amazon, Airbnb, Canon. You've worked with agencies such as Saatchi & Saatchi, uh, TBWA and McCann Erickson, among others. But your passion is rooted in belief-led creativity, enabling you to leverage your expertise in crafting compelling campaigns that inspire and profoundly resonate with audience. So that's uh, audiences. So that's what we're going to talk about today is, is about this branding and core values. And also, uh, I think it's fair to say, Lenny, that a lot of people love to put their purpose or whatever, you know, or out on their website and all of this. But it's almost like better that you don't do that if it's a bumper sticker. And I feel that there's a lot of people putting, you know, a lot of people follow the trends. Oh, need to be purpose driven, need to have, you yeah. know, need to have core beliefs quickly. Let's come up with some core beliefs, bumper sticker, away we go. <laughs> you are so right. And we would actually call that um, like it's like trust washing. It's where there's an inauthentic use of belief where it becomes a marketing message, but there's not actually a lot to back it up. And I think today's consumer is more values driven than ever before. And they're able to spot that inauthentic or inauthenticity in brands really easily and say, you know what, this doesn't actually feel true. And I'm not sure I trust you as a brand. Yeah. So how do brands, because uh, I mean, I think sometimes like brand, you're trying to follow trends, like and trying to be something you're not. And you mentioned that authenticity piece. I think you get far more respect if you own who you are and you're, pr you know, you're proud and it's defensible. And you say, this is a choice we've made to be this way. People react far better to that than they do to, yeah, this sounds just, yeah, sounds great, but it just doesn't seem to gel with who you are. You're so right. You know, I think that in order to build trust and connection with consumers, there has to be a deeper belief at the center of what you do. Because like we said, you know, customers are more values driven than ever before. They don't want to buy your features and benefits. They want to buy the deeper belief that drives you as an organization. So, you know, we work with a lot of CMOs and brands all around the country. And one of the things that we're always counselling them on is your role isn't just to make a profit. That's a nice result, but let's think about what's actually the conviction that drives you as an organisation. What's the badge of identity that you wear as a company and how can we use that as a way to connect with customers, impact uh, culture and the world in different ways and have something that feels truer and deeper, a North Star that drives everything that you do. So how how do you work with people to help uncover what their core beliefs are? Because I often think like people kind of assume that they have some uh, and that the company has some or they've just organically happened over time, uh, but there's no real intentionality around it. How do you how do you help uncover what what a company's real core beliefs are? I love that question because <clears throat> you're right. You know, I think there, there is a knack to uncovering it. But what we like to say is that it's not manufactured. Um, if anything, if a, if a marketing company comes in you, into your organisation to tell you what your beliefs are, you've probably got a problem. Yeah. Where we like to begin is listening, watching, observing and understanding like what what are those core convictions that run through the organization sometimes they're kind of hidden away under a few layers sometimes they're a little more apparent and everyone can talk to them very freely but typically there is a deeper belief system that is driving why an organization does what it does we almost see ourselves as anthropologists that need to come in just to uncover those layers and start to connect all the dots together. And once we've done that, 
know, we can start to really think, okay, well, this is the belief system that drives uh, a certain brand. And let's figure out how we use that as a way to connect to customers and build trust. Um, let's use it as a way to find that white space in the market that only this brand can own. You know, belief isn't something that's just fluffy. It's something that drives business growth. Yeah, no, I, I, absolutely. And and how, have, how often do you come across that uh, circumstance when you go in and you listen and that, that you suddenly find that, you know, there's a lot of misalignment. Maybe there's one group over, or one person over here that has these beliefs or one group over there who thinks this is the core beliefs and they're, and they're all kind of surprised that they're on different wavelengths. Oh, more often than you would imagine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and often what we'll see is that's just the surface level understanding mm -hmm. of what their belief might be. What typically happens, though, is as we start to peel back those layers of the onion, we see a through line that unites the internal culture. It might be interpreted in different ways across mm -hmm. silos in the organisation, but more often than not, there's a very consistent through line that drives everyone. Part of what we need to do is help show that back to uh, clients that we work with and just find ways to perhaps put it together in a different um, set of words or a different set of meaning that that allows everyone to connect to this. You know, the, the best compliment that we can get is when someone says, you know, what, you're right, I, I didn't see that before, but you really have captured the heart of what we do as an organisation. Yeah, and 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 I think uh, on, on top of that too is... I think sometimes when people hear things like, you know, core beliefs and in the brand that they think it has to be something like, you know, dramatic, it has to be something like global world changing, but it can be something as, as simple as we believe in service. We believe in looking after our customer. Like we believe in really helping like human to human helping customer. And that's a core belief. For me, that's way more powerful than if you put on something that's, you know, it's a nice, it sounds great, you know, we're, we're this, but it's a big global issue that you really don't have much impact on. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with you. And like Zappos would be a great example of a belief system that is driven by just giving fantastic customer service. It's mm -hmm. about understanding that the customer is king and doing everything that they can to drive the best experience for them. Um, I think on the flip side, you've got brands like Patagonia, where perhaps they are a little bit more um, <clears throat> altruistic in, in where their belief system is. But I think the thing that we can take away from two very disparate examples is that it needs to be true and authentic to who you are as an organisation. It's very believable that Zappos is all about heroing their customer. It's also very believable that Patagonia wants to impact the world and the environment in better ways. Um, that authenticity plays a key role. And then I think it's about living out what you leave. It's not enough to say it. You actually mm -hmm. have to do it. And so we're always encouraging the brands that we're working with to think really hard about not just what you say on a piece of paper, but how does it integrate through every aspect, not only of the brand, but of your business as well? Yeah, and, and I think that's a, it's an important, that's obviously a critical piece for people to to consider is A, you know, what do we yeah. believe? But, but B, can we actually execute on this? Can we really impact it? Are we organized to? Can we, is this something that's actually within our capability? Do we need to pick something that we can, a little bit different, that we can actually really impact? Because there's no point in picking something that everybody is, yeah, this is fantastic, but you can't organize yourself to impact it. Exactly. I mean, that's inauthenticity at its core. You know, it's saying, hey, this looks good as a, a, a marketing message to promise someone or these words look great on paper and don't we all feel good only as a culture but if you're not to back it up with the points that show how you have integrated that deeper belief into your customer acquisition strategies into your supply chain strategies into the internal culture that you create or your hiring policies 
you've got a really big problem. We actually call that the say do gap. It's like a trust disconnect. Mm -hmm. It's between uh, perhaps you disconnect between what you say as an organization and what you do as an organization. And it can cause all sorts of problems internally and externally in the market. Yeah, and that's why I would think it's better to, you know, do what you say. And if you're if you're not going to do it, then don't say it in the first place. Exactly. I think that's much better. And and it's much better to go, no, we're not doing any of this stuff rather than say, oh yeah, yeah, we're on board with this, but we're not really going to do anything. <laughs> exactly. And you know, I think there are great examples in the market of where big organizations have been caught out doing exactly that. You know, I think some of the the Volvo controversy from a few years ago where, you know, they were making commitments of driving sustainability and better choices for the environment. And then actually, in practice, they weren't actually doing that. That caused not only huge issues in terms of from a regulatory point of view that they had to mm -hmm. pay a lot of fines and, you know, had to make penance for a lot of the, the bad decisions that they'd made. That was some irrevocable damage that was done to their brand and their trust with their customers because all of a sudden their word wasn't delivered on. You know, how can you trust someone that just makes this promise and then does something that's perhaps not aligned with that um, behind the scenes? So the other challenge I think you see then is that your competitors, when they see that you're having that issue, can swoop right in to perhaps pick up those customers and drive better relationships and better trust with them and take that market share away from you. Yeah, and that's and that's obviously a real danger. That's why uh, obviously it's really it's really incredibly important that if you do this, that you really mean it and that you're going to live it. Because as you said, otherwise you're going to come across as inauthentic and you're going to leave an opening for someone else. That's why I always think, like I said, it's it's almost better off that you do nothing than you do something inauthentic. Exactly. Exactly. Mean what you say and then do what you say. That would be something that is so important for brands today to think about. You know, don't go out there just promising the world. That's not going to work with today's customers. And it shouldn't work within yourself as, yeah. you know, an individual trying to impact an organization. There needs to be something deeper to what you do and you have to be able to back it up. When you close that say do gap, I think that's where you start to see a lot more traction uh, in connecting with your customers and in growing your business. Yeah, and I think the another another component is just is is also to when you start initiatives like this is to be careful that they don't you know that they are in line with the business and support the business and they don't become go off on kind of a tangent and then start distracting. I mean, I've seen that too happen where suddenly like the business loses focus because everybody's running off over here, you know, for the latest, the latest uh, thing that they want to associate themselves with. So it has to be very carefully aligned. It does. It does. Um, you know, I think it needs to start from the inside out. Mm -hmm. So that means that you're truly thinking about at the core, who is your organization? What do you do in the market? And who are the customers that you serve? And if it feels authentic and true across those filters, then that feels right. But if you're just out there chasing a trend or chasing a growing category, but with perhaps without that authenticity or reasoning to back up why you're doing what you're doing, um, you know, I think you'll have some long-term challenges. You know, we always counsel clients that building brands is a combination of making smart decisions to drive short-term growth, but also making really smart decisions to ensure the long-term growth and stability of your business. Yeah, no, absolutely. So where have you seen, I mean, what, what, would, what characterizes an organization that has gotten this right, that has you know, uncovered their core beliefs and has aligned it uh, and has aligned across the organization and it is able to deliver on those beliefs and, uh, and it has made their business you know, more impactful as a result? You know, I think we kind of mentioned it before, but Patagonia is always mm. a shining light as an organization that do this. Um, you know, I think they've done really well at understanding what is that North Star, that core belief that drives them and using that as a compass, I think, to uh, define and then grow their business. 
What I also really like about what they do as an organization is it's not just a promise, it's lived out through the product that they sell, through the customer experience that they deliver, through all of their marketing programs, the way they source their products. I mean, you name any aspect of their business and you can see how they've used their belief as a compass to drive decisions around what they create and what they take to the market. Yeah, and and I think and the thing you mentioned there is customer experience, and I think that's a, a that's a really important thing also to underline because customer experience today is the you know it's a continuum. It's right from the first time they interact with your brand to perhaps you know then they prospect, maybe they become a customer, then they're established customer, whatever. But all the time there there's lots of different touch points with your organization. There's lots of different ways they engage with it. And if you don't, if it's not a consistent experience, so if the experience is not consistent, and if, as you said, if the if the beliefs and principles of the organization aren't obvious at every step of the way, then again, you know, you're out of sync. Oh, so true. You know, I think you you're right. You have to think about it as a continuum. It's not just enough to say that we stand for this in order to acquire customers. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the goal is to create a loyal, a, a, like a large base of loyal customers that will have a very long term relationship with you. And I think the more touch points that they have with your brand the more they're looking to make sure that you are truly delivering on what you say you do. Um, And you've got to be aware of that at every step. So often when we're working with organisations, while our way in might be talking about their brand, Mm -hmm. we'll always encourage them to then take that thinking and it needs to apply across the whole business. So we'll do a lot of cross-functional workshopping and program planning to really make sure that this feels genuine and true across the whole business. Yeah. And and I guess one of the other challenges that uh, a lot of organizations have today is you have to spread this across an organization that may be very, very different from what it used to look like. It may be virtual. It may be, you know, hybrid. It may be so distributed, different people, different backgrounds, your global, all of that. I mean, it's, it's, that you can, there's so many different components that could go into a, a, a modern organization. Aligning all of those around something, it can be quite a challenge. Oh, you're not wrong. Um, we always say that the best belief led brands start with CEO embodiment. That is, that whoever is that founder, that leader, that CEO, the person that is at the top driving where the organization is going really has to make sure that they are truly aligned with that core conviction or that belief because if it's if they're supporting it and then it is funneled through the rest of the organization it becomes much easier to build and integrate that belief into your behaviors and your actions when it comes from the top down if it's something where we've got one section of the organization doing something over here and another section of the organization doing something over there and it's not supported by senior leadership, that becomes a really tough challenge to integrate that across the business. So when we're working with clients, we often spend a lot of time on change management. Right. That is, how do we make sure all stakeholders are aligned and engaged to the common goal? Yeah, and what's also kind of nice about that too, although I'm, I'm, I've never been one of these people who really, you know, gets too concerned about turnover because I think there's a certain amount of turnover is natural and necessary. And I think when you go through a process like you're talking about here, it also gives a, an opportunity for people to decide that to opt in or to opt out or say, yeah, it's not actually if this is where we're going or whatever. It's not really what I'm interested in. I'm head over here. But it, it's it's a good thing. And I and I, that's why I, I don't think it's always about like, oh, you got to do these things to hold on to everybody. It's like, no, you need to hold on to the people who are bought in and who really believe in what you're doing and the other people let them self-select out. That, that is so true. And I think COVID was such a Uh, I think, an awakening point for a lot of people where they went, you know what, I'm not sure if I'm really aligned with the goals of the organisation that I'm working for. My head is over here and this is what I think and believe. And so I'm going to find an organisation that aligns with that because ultimately I think we all want to have a deeper purpose at the heart of the work that we do. So, you know, I think belief can be a tool to um, 
att attract the right people mm -hmm. to your organization and perhaps retain the right people mm -hmm. too and get you know kindly uh, help the ones that perhaps are not aligned move on to somewhere else yeah repel <laughs> <laughs> so recruit retain and then repel yes. <laughs> i think i have a new model i better write that one down <laughs> three hours uh well listen lynn yeah, this has been fantastic all of lenya's information is going to be below this video but before we go please do tell people a little bit more about what you do yeah, so Believer is an agency. We work with brands that want to use their beliefs and behaviors as a way to drive meaningful growth. So everything from brand strategy to brand identity to brand activation, we work with clients on all of that. A great place to learn more about us is at Believer.com and we have a lot of fantastic resources that you can take a look at to learn more about belief. Yeah, fantastic. Listen, thanks again, Lenya. Thank you for watching and listening. I'll see you all again soon. Thank you. Thanks.